The Psychology of the Cosmic Order by Lewis Francis Anderson Page 13 The Force of Consciousness Consciousness is the cognitive force of the will. No such force exists apart from the will. Its real origin lies in the self-consciousness of the will. Self-consciousness being the introspective and consciousness the prospective movement to cognition. In other words, if I am conscious of myself, that is, of my own actions, thoughts, and sentiments, I am self-conscious. But if I am conscious of an object beyond the application of consciousness to my own ego, I am, logically speaking, not self-conscious, but only conscious. The perspective movement, however, involves the whole force of the will, its mover, its movement, and its motive. Broadly speaking, consciousness is the psychological term for subjective knowledge. As such, it does not necessarily express logical qualifications, which first reveal themselves in the intellectual capacity of the soul. One may have a logical as well as an illogical consciousness, which merely shows either strength or weakness of the intellect. Intellect contains a mental capacity for more or less logical understanding of the conscious material the will has acquired and stored in its memory. This understanding of the self-conscious will may extend over many fields of knowledge and be able to explain many interrelations in the manifestations of life to the end of comprehending the underlying forces and laws through which these forces exist. Owing to lack of profounder insight, however, the human intellect inclines rather to the study of mere phenomenon and hence is rarely able to discover any of their lawful principles. Intellectual capacity may be ever so extensive as regards knowledge, but so long as it does not explain the reason for knowledge itself, its efforts will not produce the expected educational results. It is true that knowledge is acquired through intellect, but the cognition of the real value of knowledge is attained only through the power of reason. The cause of the prevailing intellectual weakness is that knowledge, as generally conceived, almost wholly overlooks the profoundest element of life consisting of worthiness and value. As a consequence, propagandists of mere knowledge assume too much and promise what, from their inconcrete idealistic viewpoint, it is impossible for them to produce. Life does not consist in mere knowing or defining a phenomenon or facts known as knowledge, but chiefly in worthy realities which are essentially volitional and active. That self-conscious and self-sentient activity requires truth for worthy effectuation is self-evident. But knowledge is not truth. It is only a subjective consciousness of a mass of more or less correlated facts with little or no specific tendency to truth as the absolute light of life. Above intellect, therefore, stands reason, the unflinching searcher after the fundamental cause and significance of cosmic laws in which our life is involved. To be sure, extensive intellectual capacity is very important, but reason, which demands not only logical correlation of knowledge, but also the axiological or super-spiritual scrutiny of the motives and causes of life, is far more important. In its logical sense, reason is that capacity for the self-conscious will that enables it to fathom, discover, and ascertain the principles and laws of the whole cosmic order. This is its fundamental task, despite the fact that it is also applied to minor objectives. Reason and intellect have ultimately the same objective, except that in its intellect the will endeavors to know rather the what and the how, while through its reasoning capacity the will attempts to fathom the why of existence. Without this intrinsic purpose of reason, the fathoming of the origin and cause of things, both thinking and understanding, would be logically ineffective.
The distinction between pure reason and practical reason lies in the fact that the former pertains to the strict following of logical laws and categories, and the latter to the application of logical concepts to deeds. There exists no logical contradiction in these two terms. Neither reason nor intellect are formal psychological forces or forms separate from or above the soul's essential force of will, consciousness, feeling, and their inherent forms. They are only mental capacities relative to the logical cognition of truth in which not only consciousness but also the will and sentiment are intrinsically involved. Every soul is able to possess a broader intellect and profounder reason if it only determines to attain them. Figuratively, consciousness is the eye of the will directed towards objects in order to apprehend and understand their importance and value. Precisely as the force of the will contains three volitional forms of activity, so also the force of consciousness, the knowing force of the will, contains three forms of cognition, namely perception, conception, and complex of concepts or ideas. Logically, perception is the principle, concept the process, and complex of concepts the effect of consciousness. End of section.